folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. Those of you who have seen my channel know I've been searching for a housing for my iPhone 13 Pro and now my iPhone 14 Pro. Today's video looks at 20 underwater housings for a smartphone. I hope you find this useful as I've done the research for you. So let's look at how my rating system works. I have five categories ordered in the level of importance to me. They are on a scale of one to 10. They are for my needs as a videographer doing scuba and wreck diving up here in the cold New England waters. These ratings may not apply to you if you're a snorkeler, free diver, or say kayaker. These opinions are my own and I do not represent any manufacturer. So my categories, depth, got a minimum cutoff of 60 feet, preferably a hundred or greater. You can see a break in the ratings for anything under 60 feet. Next, durability. For wreck diving up here in New England, I need something that can take abuse. Construction, material quality, potential points of failure are considerations. Ease of use, simplicity, setup and breakdown times, quick access to the phone, responsiveness, minor post-production work, and image quality, to name a few. Versatility. What camera modes can be used? What kind of attachments and accessories are available? Is it cold water usage? Is it upgradable? And then cost. While this may be the lowest of the categories, it can be a major factor. It is based off the previous four categories, with the bottom line being one question. Was it worth the cost to me? These next Four housings were non-starters for me due to their similarity to other housings I've used, which I had issues. They can't fit the 13 or 14 Pro. They didn't have the durability or versatility, ease of use for the cost. This exclusion is as is of this release. These could change if the manufacturers update the housing. All pricing provided is as of this release. Housing's not fitting the 13 and 14 Pro. Now T-Smart. It can go to 150 feet, cost $230, but its internal phone dimensions of 16.9 by 8.0 by 0.9 centimeters appears not to fit the iPhone 14 Pro due to its bump out. Now T-Cam. It can go to 210 feet, costs $180, I can't find a release after their NAIP6 model, so it too got dropped. Zoop, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. Uh, it comes out of China. It's depth rated to 130 feet and costs between $120 and $150. I can't find anywhere on the site that it fits a 13 or 14 Pro. It does have a similar look and feel to another housing that I had durability concerns with, so I left it out. Valstec, which comes out of Canada, goes to 130 feet, costs around $700. No iPhone 13 or 14. As far as I can see, the latest iPhone it can use is the iPhone 11. The following four housings I dropped due to depth. You know, my minimum cutoff is 60 feet. The G-Dome V2. It ranges from 15 feet, some say 30, but for $150, 15 feet just doesn't cut it. Pro Shot Touch. That goes to 50 feet and costs $160. I have another housing that is a touch-oriented housing that goes to a much greater depth. We'll look at the Pro Shot Dive case in a few minutes. The next is Axis Go. Looks pretty sturdy, but only goes to 33 feet, yet costs $220. I like that the Axis Go has a touch screen and you can use all the features of the phone. Unfortunately, per the company, when using the internal wide angle lens, you will get vignetting and will have to dial the settings back. To my knowledge, at this time, it does not fit the iPhone 14. Sub Blue, that too goes to 33 feet and costs $230. It is similar to the Pro Shot Dive, which led to concerns around durability, so I left that off. 
Frankly, I'm not sure you would buy anything depth three under uh, 60 feet that wasn't well under $100. The next two housings I dropped due to cost. Let's be clear. I'm not saying they're inferior. It's just that the cost is beyond what I was looking to spend at this time. Both are made by the same company. It's called Easy Dive in Europe. So remember, as the euro fluctuates, so do these prices. Dive shot. It goes to 180 feet and costs around $650 US. It is listed as touch oriented, but it requires an internal battery and an app to navigate. It uses these sensor pads on the back of the housing, which is a hard plastic. So you are not really using the phone itself from a touch standpoint. What I've seen, the app is similar to both Hot Dive and Deep Photo in most regards. I haven't heard back yet from the company as to whether it can use all three lenses on the 13 or 14 Pro. Leo 3 Smart Housing. This goes to 450 feet. It too has an app similar to the Seafrog, where the app utilizes the phone's mouse to navigate across the screen. It has an external adapter kits for macro and wide angle lenses, uh, it has single arm tray handle, lights, etc. For me at this time though, the price tag of $850 minimum to well over a thousand US led me to put this aside for now. Here is a matrix showing why these eight housings didn't meet my criteria and what their capabilities are, if they potentially meet yours. The next six housings I did buy. I used them both in the Northeast and in the Caribbean. I will leave links in the description for these housings if you want more detailed review of their inner workings and test results. We'll start with a shell box. This comes under many names, the Yogre, Mamets, Nikkei, Sharpie. They're all basically the same. I didn't put it under the previous knockout list because I actually bought it. And I mistakenly thought it said 50 meters, not 50 feet. So for depth, it gets a four. It doesn't make the 60 foot cutoff. For durability, it gets a four. The plastic on the back is flimsy. Uh, for the touch cover, it's suspect. It's, trim, uh, it's thin, brittle. For ease of use, it gets a nine. The slider mechanism is a small pain, but there's no app. It does have a trigger button on top. There were some challenges getting it, the touch to work consistently, but it still gets a nine. Versatility gets a five. There's no red filter. There's no attachments. It will fit the iPhone 14 Pro. I only paid $55 for it, but from a cost standpoint, it still gets a five because of its lack of usefulness for me. So the overall rating, 5.4. I might use it on a rafting trip, but that's it. Next, sea frogs. This housing, I actually had to make physical internal changes to fix the issues with the lens opening. For depth, it gets an eight since it can do 130 feet. Durability also gets an eight. It's pretty sturdy, granted polycarbonate, but it took some abuse up here in the Northeast. From ease of use, it gets a seven. as a manual vacuum pump, but they couldn't tell me what it's for other than the initial water testing. Longer setup and breakdown times. It did have consistent mouse AI reset issues. Lots of post-production work due to vignetting. From a versatility standpoint, it also got a five. I couldn't use the internal dot 5X lenses on the phone or any wide angle lens attachments due to the circular opening issues, which led to vignetting and blurriness. I expanded the internal opening of the housing using a Dremel and built my own internal sleeves to make it work with an external wide angle lens and the dot 5X, although not together. It can fit the iPhone 14 Pro, but I'll need to make new sleeves for it. From a cost standpoint, gets a five due to me having to make significant changes. Overall rating, gets a 6.6. .6. This could improve if they address the lens opening issues. Pro shot dive. For depth, it gets an eight since it can do 130 feet. 
for durability, it gets a seven. It's not very sturdy. The plastic is thin. The clamps do not have a lot of tension strength. And the O-ring compartment needs a full replacement if it fails. Ease of use, it gets an eight. It has no battery, no vacuum, or Bluetooth. A short setup and breakdown times. The app is a bit buggy with Zoom and time lapse keeps crashing my phone. ProShot says they are working to address this issue, but I have not heard back from them yet. Versatility, I got a six. Doesn't use all the internal lenses of the camera. No shoe mount, no external lens attachments. The red filter cannot be removed underwater, and the app drains the phone battery. It can, however, fit the iPhone 14 Pro. From a cost standpoint, it gets a 7 due to durability and app issues. The ProShot dive case overall rating is a 7.4. Palouse. Palouse is a basic housing that doesn't claim to be more than it is. For depth, it gets an 8 since it can go to 130 feet. For durability, it gets a 7. It's plastic, not an aluminum. The shoe mounts are plastic. The rubber spacers kept falling out. For ease of use, it gets a 9. It has just a couple of buttons to move things around. Those are positional uh, based on the phone. It has easy setup, no batteries, no vacuum, no Bluetooth or app. From a versatility standpoint, it gets a 6. The buttons are fixed. You can't use the internal zoom. There are no attachments for external lenses. The red filter was terrible. I had to jury rig an old GoPro filter just to use it. It is built specifically for the iPhone 13 Pro, so there's no upgrading to the 14. From a cost, it gets an eight. It was cheap, it was only 65 bucks, but durability and versatility challenges push this rating down a bit. So, the overall rating for the Palouse, 7.6. Hot Dive 2, H2. This one has two apps, Hot Dive and Deep Photo. And depending upon which you use to control the camera, I give it two separate ratings. Check out my review on this housing. It includes a mini tutorial on each app, Hot Dive and Deep Photo. From a depth standpoint, it gets a 10. It can do 240 feet. For durability, it gets an 8. While externally, it was great. The nano sticky pad issues, the tiny vacuum pin, and the internal anti-fog film, which scuffed easily under normal use, impacting image quality, pushed the rating down. Ease of use. Gets a 6 for a hot dive and a 7 for deep photo. Long setup and breakdown times, even with an auto vacuum, both apps were buggy with navigation and sync up challenges. There was a lot of post-production work, uh, especially with the Hot Dive app, which produced choppy video quality. From a versatility standpoint, it gets a five for Hot Dive and a six for Deep Photo. Shortened phone battery life, bypassing of basic iPhone capabilities, subscription fees for the Deep Photo app, poor image quality due to both the internal anti-fog film and the Hot Dive app, and then lastly, the iPhone 14 Pro doesn't fit the housing as advertised. Cost. With Hot Dive, it gets a four. With Deep Photo, it gets a six. For the $400 I spent, it wasn't worth it. It doesn't fit my iPhone 14 properly and creates degraded images due to the internal anti-fog film. I've been in contact with the company. They can provide replacement sticky pads, saying they would double up the sticky pads for the 14 Pro. If I am willing to send the housing back, they will replace the internal anti-fog film and simply charge for shipping and handling. But at this juncture, they can't send me a version where the internal film is not applied. For those reasons, the overall rating is a 6.6 .6 with Hot Dive and a 7.6 with Deep Photo. Dive Volk. For depth, it gets a 9. It goes 180 feet. For durability, it gets an 8. The possibility of a puncture of the back membrane has always been a concern since it 
malleable. But I've come a long way with my bubble concerns since it's really turned out to be, other than annoying, a non-issue. The lens holder bracket needs to be redesigned. If it fails, all the attachments would simply fall off, including the phone housing, even if you have it attached to a tray mount. This should be built directly into the housing. From an ease of use, gets a 10. No batteries, no vacuum, no Bluetooth, no app. You can use all the features of the phone, even as a phone on the surface if needed. It's easy to clean, has very short setup and breakdown times, quick access to the phone if I need it. From a versatility standpoint, it also gets a nine. I can use all of the phone's capabilities. It has a lot of accessories and filter configurations. I may not use it in super cold water. Gloves were a bit challenging, but that's even less of an issue after using a shim to move the phone closer to the membrane. For cost, it gets a nine. The concerns weren't enough to push this down. And at only $200, it is worth it. It made using the iPhone while diving easy. My final rating for the Dive Volk Sea Touch 4 Max underwater housing is a 9. I really like this housing. I've looked at a couple other potential housings. Again, I'm not saying these housings are inferior, but there's not enough at the moment for me to want to spend more money to get them due to similarities with the other housings. First, Diveroid. This housing is similar to Hot Dive and Sea Frog. It goes to 200 feet. It leverages a double O-ring configuration, has a heat sink anti-fog system uh, through a polycarbonate housing. There are attachments for lights and trays, but not for external lenses or filters. It's button oriented and it too uses an app it offers color correction, dive logs, depth meters, etc. It needs batteries and uses Bluetooth as well. It does fit the iPhone 13 Pro, but there's no indication yet that it fits the 14 Pro. The price for the base unit is $430. Next, we have Kraken and WeFind. They are basically the same housing. One marketed out of China and the other one out of Canada. Kraken has two models, the KRH-05 and the KRH-06. The 05 is the pro version with depth and temperature sensors. Both are good to 260 feet. This housing is very similar to the hot dive, both externally and internally. It requires two AAA batteries versus a built-in battery. It has a manual vacuum system versus automatic, it has no built-in light, has similar external attachment capabilities for lenses, etc. It too uses an app like Hot Dive and can use the Deep Photo app. I talked with the company. Apparently, there's a new version coming out in January of 2023. My understanding, there were some software issues with the previous app and the new housing will be able to handle the 13 Pro and 14 Pro. But until I see it, since the current housing states a maximum phone depth of 9.5 millimeters, we'll see. The cost for the base unit for the Kraken is around $430. Sea Life Sport Diver. It's like a cross between hot dive and sea frogs. It can go to 130 feet, has a polycarbonate housing. It has a manual vacuum system. It has tray mount and light accessories and a red filter. Doesn't have magenta or yellow filters and can't mount any external lenses. It too needs batteries, uses Bluetooth, and has an app to control the phone. It has inserts for a moisture muncher, they call it, to reduce fogging. Per the company, it can't do cinematic mode or use all of the features of the new phones. It will fit both the 13 and 14 Pro. It too can use the Deep Photo app. It costs about 350 bucks for the base unit.
These six housings have potential and I haven't written them off just yet. I need to see what kind of upgrades or changes they make in the near future before buying. Again, this matrix highlights their capabilities. So my challenge with all of these housings is the fact at this point, I have not had much success nor seen overwhelming results from any housing offering an app. To me, the ones that were least impactful are those that just manages the phone's mouse. Dive logs, compass, social media, and apps overriding the phone's camera's AI is not something I want nor need, especially with the iPhone 14 Pro's new 48 megapixel main camera and some other new capabilities that it's offering. Let the phone do what it can do. So, my needs. Here's the good, the bad, and the ugly. My overall choice is the Dive Volk. I started this journey a year ago with this housing, trying to find one that eliminated my concerns on the soft membrane. The problem is all the other housings had issues that annoyed the heck out of me. The membrane issue never materialized and its simplicity is the overwhelming factor. Palouse was pretty cheap and is a great alternative in a pinch. Disappointingly, the hot dive came close. If it can correct its challenges with the internal fog film and correct the fact that it doesn't fit the iPhone 14 Pro, I might give it a try again. Well, I hope you found this mega review useful. 20 housings I know is a lot, in case you're in the market for one. I realize I'm gonna get some pushback from the housings I didn't purchase, but the similarities are too great. I spent well over $2,000 in 12 months doing these reviews. Uh, I may buy them in the future, but at this point in time, I'm gonna stick with the one that worked for me, and that's the Dive Volk. Do check out some of my rec videos. Look for upcoming videos where I use the iPhone 14 Pro. I hope you're all staying safe and enjoying your diving. And as usual, until the next time, co-explore, get wet.